If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. You can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio after dark with our host gary anderson and that is me boy i just can't believe it's thursday this week is just wow it's just been going by so fast well in a half an hour we're going to have our guests on we're going to be talking about the lizzie borden uh, house which now is a bed and breakfast and a museum i don't know if i'd want to sleep in there you know uh, I just think about the, you know, the murder, if I remember right, James, didn't even take place in the house. Wasn't it outside the house, if I remember right? No, no. Actually, they they both took place in the house. One was upstairs, and the mother was upstairs in the room, and the father was right inside on the, in the living room there on the couch. Yeah, you, yeah it was on the couch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. our guest is Colleen Foley. And uh, she'll be on about, uh, well, the top of the hour to tell us all about it. You know, if there's still spirits, like, roaming that house. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but there was other um, Borden family members that lived there, I think, next door. And I think they died. Two or three of them died on the land there also. Now, I used to live just around the corner, about a block, a block and a half away from that house. And that was the same year that I went to that little barbecue. But, um, and I've went to the boarding house before. Matter of fact, I was in there one time upstairs in one room. I think it was Lizzie's room actually. And they had this little, um, stand beside the bed. And I was in there not, didn't think nothing of it. I went into the, another room and, and while I'm in the other room, I can hear, what sounds like, you know, it's an antique little dr- um, stand. It sound, it's got a little drawer in the front. And it sounds like it's being pulled out. Well, I looked at my friend. We, we looked at each other like, did we just hear that, you know? Go back in the Lizzie room, and that drawer is pulled out, and it stayed. It's, it's, somebody pulled it out and left it there. And there was only two people upstairs, me and my friend. There was nobody else. So, I mean, that was kind of freaky. Oh, I guess it would be. You know, I I don't know. I have never lived or even stayed in a haunted house. I don't think I'd want to. You know, it it was bad enough working at a place one time that was, I think, haunted because I'd hear footsteps and and muffled talking. But could you imagine the evilness still, you know, looming that house, uh, you know, Lizzie Borden house and and maybe those spirits of her mom and dad, you know, being unsettled. Ah, I don't know. But, you know, they, that's, that's a- not the only one. You know, we have a couple other places where, you know, like the father went through and killed the whole entire family. Then there was one case where the, the one child, uh, you know, son, I think, went and killed his sister, mom and dad and all that. That, you know, which one of that is. That starts with a house, you know. Yeah, that was one of the stories I had. I didn't get a chance to talk on, but that's right. You're very right about that. And um, not only that, but the, the the other family that moved in after that, they almost went through the same thing. They was there for only supposed, supposedly for 28 days, couldn't take no more, had to move out. 
But yeah, that's a lot of energy, especially in the board. And when you, you mean, you're talking the the act of killing somebody with an axe is up close and personal. Just just vision that now. And, and you know, you're not talking one whack, a few whacks. And, and that's a lot of blood. That's a lot of um, now we don't want to, we don't want to get gory, but it, it, with an axe, okay. And yeah, how many right. times is she supposed to give her mom the axe? That was like uh, I'm trying to remember that. Uh, little rhyme uh you 40 know, 40 it wouldn't be much left of his, her mom let alone the father no right you're right and you know it, um, i won't get into details but you, did, you can just paint the picture yourself but that's a lot of up close and personal emotions and energy that's not just going to go away it's still floating around in that house for sure it's on the walls and the ceilings that energy and it's just it's palpable I'm just wondering how many people, because there's now a bed and breakfast and museum. I'm just wondering how many people would, who would want to spend a night in one of those places? I think it'd be eerie. I mean, you go there and you, you put your head on the pillow and you, you could have this dream of somebody coming in there with an axe and, and chopping you up. Or how do you know that somebody who's not a schizophrenic comes in and breaks in and, you know, just wants to carry on what Lizzie started? By the way, we have Sam out there. How you doing, Sam? I'm doing very good, Gary and James. Were you staying out of trouble? No. <laughs> well, it's very difficult lately, but I'm tr- making an attempt to do so. Okay. Well, have you had anything exciting happen to you? Like, has anybody chased uh, chased you with an axe or anything lately? No, but I I do remember some stories of the different things that have happened in different parts of the country. Okay. And when I started thinking about Lizzie Borden, I, I'm I'm thinking about the most there's two in particular. The more recent one, which I feel that both of you are probably aware of, is the John List story. Well, I'm familiar with it, but why don't you tell, you know, take a couple minutes and yeah, explain I mean, that to the listeners. A lot of people don't know about that one. It was, um, it was an individual in, in New Jersey, and he had uh, three children, he had his wife and mother, and fell into some financial difficulty. And for some reason, they they later claimed he had psychological problems, that he had uh, an obsessive compulsive disorder, that these people reasoned that better to dispose of the problem. In other words, if he was having financial troubles, that it would be easier to get rid of his family so he doesn't have to worry about them anymore. And... How twisted this was, was he had a strong religious faith on top of that. And one of his reasons, aside from financial issues, was that he was perceiving that his family was straying away from the faith. And he he rationalized that if he killed them, they'd have a one-way, one-way ticket to heaven. You know, so they wouldn't go through their life in sin and end up in hell or whatever the, the case may be. But the twisted part about this, he premeditated this a whole month ahead of time in such a way where he meticulously killed his wife, his mother, and three children, laid them out inside the home in such a way, and took care of bills and everything, so they didn't find him for quite a while. So he uh, pulls up stake and goes cross-country from Jersey into Colorado and gets a job as a bookkeeper for a particular company there. He remarries and joins a church of all things, a Lutheran church. And you would never know this guy, this peaceful, quiet guy, was this horrible mass murder. And the only reason he got caught was there was an episode of America's Most Wanted that, uh, and that show has been really great for you know, you know, you can't elude everyone watching the TV and seeing your face. That's how they got him, and they even made this into a movie uh, called "The John List Story" with Robert Blake. He played uh, John List in that story. So that's one of the more uh, heinous ones I know in recent history. Interesting. The one before, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the one before that is goes way back. And what's interesting about this one 
It was about the Lawson family and the murder of the Lawson family in North Carolina. This took place back in 1929. And what's interesting about this, I only came in knowledge about this because I actually knew or worked with the author of the book called, let me make sure I got this this correct, um, White Christmas, Bloody Christmas. And I remember talk, her name's Judy Smith. I remember her talking about this whole story. Her and, and uh, an associate researched this whole story. I think she was the one that was responsible for writing the story for the other individual, but she published the book along with him. And this was a case of Charles Lawson, who was a farmer, and they were um, had just purchased a farm. And what's really bizarre about this was there was no clue that this was going to happen about the murder because what he ended up doing was murdering his wife and their seven children. And the thing was, he went into town, he bought them all new clothes, and they had a family portrait taken. It was all premeditated. So when he got back to the house, he meticulously started uh, killing the kids, and then he shot uh, with a 12-gauge shotgun. Killed them all, including a two-year-old baby, and bludgeoned it to death, too. Then he, uh, the, the only one that escaped out of that was the oldest, which was a son who was 16, author, and he, uh, he wasn't there. So after the killing took place, he went out, took the shotgun, I believe, went out in the woods, killed himself. So the problem is with this, as heinous as this is, people are wondering the motive, you know, <laughs> They finally found out that in this particular case, the motive had to do with an incestuous relationship he was having with the oldest daughter. And she became pregnant. So, and you know, back in those days, a scandal like that carried a horrific um, weight and probably a legal weight too, as opposed to nowadays. I mean, even then, that's, that's still bad today. But here's a person that reasoned, well, I don't want to be exposed with this, so I think it's better if we just uh, off everybody, the whole family and himself. He says, I don't want to deal with this situation, so I'm going to take everybody out. And, uh, and, and there seems to be more supporting evidence about this as time goes on, and the book alluded to some of this information. So those are the two <laughs> that really stood out in my mind when we started talking about Lizzie Borden. Yeah, it's scary. I mean, people who do things like that, you know, are emotionally have problems. I'm surprised friends, family members, or somebody didn't see this before it happens. I mean, to sit and premeditate for a week or a month or months before they do it. You know, the point is, you know, how can I say this? There is people out there, right? And I'm going to get people mad at me. They have a pet. And they know that, hey, the pet maybe now is having accidents in their house. They can't emotionally handle that. So they'll take their dog out and give the dog a great day. You know, go and buy it a hamburger or whatever, you know, and, and give it the dog the best day it's ever has. And then at 5 o'clock, they take it to the... Uh, a veterinarian and have them put down. I mean, it, it's, it's premeditated. And, and I don't understand how people can do that it, w- with animals or people or whatever. I mean, a case like this guy, he went out and bought suits and clothing and all this stuff, gave the family members, well, maybe he wanted to give them a good send off, something, you know, uh, he, he, this to ease his mind in a warped way that he was doing something nice to him before he offed him. I don't know. I don't understand people. Well, they show a picture of the portrait. 